जय भीम एंड जो हार फ्रेंड्स ऑन दिस ऑस्पिशियस डे फोर्टीन ऑफ एप्रिल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी आई विश यू ऑल अ वेरी मीनिंगफुल अम्बेडकर जयंती दिस इज द हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ वन बर्थ एनिवर्सरी दैट वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग टूडे अंडर वेरी स्पेशल सर्कमस्टांसिस i wish to place on record my gratitude to babsa for having been so energetic and mindful of utilizing these peculiar times to enable us to cele- still celebrate uh, ambedkar jayanti till 2019 we all may have celebrated uh, uh, ambedkar jayanti in various ways because uh, we were free to go either to the parliament street attend numerous programs in the cities go to different cities and be part of some major celebration and some minor celebration however i want to congratulate the creative uh, uh, part of uh, babsa leadership that they uh, organized a bhima sapta uh, beginning on 11th of april to uh, note Our, our respect for um, Jyoti Bapu Phule ji, beginning from his birth anniversary, the day of uh, his birth anniversary, we have started uh, the um, celebration of Bhima Sapta, and I understand that it may continue till today or even beyond. But uh, it is a privilege to be part of the celebration, not in person but from across the world, I guess. and uh, taking advantage of the technology we here we are to celebrate ambedkar jayanti in a very creative way each one of us may be either locked in into our hometowns i am also bringing you greetings from ranchi which is my parents place this is my homeland and uh, when the uh, lockdown took place i was locked in here and i'm not in delhi which is uh, a privileged pa- place in j uh, that is in jnu having uh, privilege of uh, the best of the technology available f- whether locked uh, lockdown or not lockdown um and here i'm sitting with very limited data service so therefore communication um channel is uh, not so um is a privilege for me and therefore um i'm humbled that babsa leadership has invited me to um, be part of the celebration i would like to um again place my gratitude to babsa leadership because they are very creative in putting me on the stop the spot and um asking me to also be part of such celebrations or such events um uh, in the they've done this in the past and even this year this is not my forte and not my strength so standing on a very slippery ground today i'm asked to celeb- uh, uh, to share my thoughts um uh, about uh, how i would like to remember and mark the life and works of baba saheb ambedkar um bhim rao Ramji Ambedkar has been not only a leader or an icon of Dalits but he is a larger than life um personality uh who has been the one of the chief architects of modern India um and therefore I'm humbled that I'm invited to share my thoughts on this day and as we are in this entire uh, pandemic uh, situation pandemonium of uh, novel coronavirus named covid-19 um i would like to uh, delve upon uh, the idea ambedkar for adivasis in post covid-19 india ambedkar for adivasis in post covid covid-19 india baba saheb ambedkar um his life has been exemplary one not because he was born 
like any other person in the depressed class in poverty having experienced discrimination and discrimination which was topped with humiliation and therefore dif discrimination at times could be um, led to think that it is a positive uh, discrimination but no in india because of the varnashram and hindu varnashram the we have seen for generations for ages discrimination is meant to is is only a tool for humiliation dehumanizing another human being um and therefore on this day when i am to recollect and be part of the celebration of life and works of dr bhimrao ambedkar ji for me how he emerged from his situation his adversities and as adversities both is an exemplary model that i would like to um each one each person and especially each kid from deprived sections of the indian society to be introduced to i wish i was introduced to this personality when i had my own struggles but the time which is passed cannot be um, regained and therefore however late in life when i was introduced to this person and personality his works i have only mesmerized he was able to rise above everything that was there in the environment at the, at that time not to allow him to come up but as it has been also recorded that um he's the one who is Uh, said that about education that education is like um education is is the milk of tigress once you have drunk you cannot but roar and this personality our icon has roared and has taught us how to roar and therefore with gratitude in my heart at this time i would like to pay my respect to baba sahib for how he envisaged and he um, his vision for modern india was where his people the people of depressed classes had their own space in making of india as a nation he did not only have a vision for his people or people of depressed classes but he had a vision of india which had space for each peoples of india because india is a country of diversity and therefore what when we say diverse societies di diverse peoples group compose india we primarily assume that unification or having a unified society would not have that flavor of india which otherwise at india um, the country of diversity could be uh, could have it has um, uh, been also noted that he because of of his education his double degrees one in india and abroad his thirst for education and after he had uh, uh, quenched his thirst with education at periodic levels he would contribute to the he would contribute to nation building prior to independence he was identified by the british government because of his brilliance and his brilliant interventions although the indian the indian society continued to discriminate him in spite of his highest degree 
Um, but the government, uh, British government at that time, was kind to identify him as a leader who could be an icon for his peoples, peoples of um, depressed classes and communities, and which made life of uh, Baba Sahib see a ray of hope for him to have space for giving back. He had space for doing things that would change the picture of India that he grew up in. I think he did everything possible that made India a different India from the India he grew up in. But he also uh, acknowledged that after the constitution, which he was the author, um, he was the prime author, after constitution would be adopted, India would continue to be a country of contradictions. A constitution which would essentially have foundations of liberty, equality, and fraternity would continue for generations to deprive people of their fair share, deprive people of their due dignity, deprive people um, of their rights as humans, equal humans. And so it would take a long way for the Indian society, the depressed sections, the marginalized and the deprived to make space for themselves. And in good time when he his slogan of educate, agitate, organize was planted and took root in the societies in India communities in India who had been historically deprived, they had to understand this slogan in order to also walk behind Ambedkar's ideas and take Ambedkar, Ambedkar's ideas, his works, and to materialize them in the India that was in the making. I'm here reminded while we, I'm, we are here celebrating um, this visionary icon, trying to remember glimpses of his vision of India, who in himself was a very accomplished man. He was a very accomplished jurist, a political leader. He went on to be named as a Dalit leader a philosopher, a thinker, an anthropologist, a historian, a prolific writer, orator. He was so articulate in what he thought that he was able to communicate not only to the elite, to the educated, but he was able to touch the hearts of semi-literates or Ill illiterates too, because to perceive education Literacy is not required, however, to make a space in the society and this modern society, education was needed. Um, he was an eminent and erudite scholar. He was a revolutionary. He revitalized Buddhism also in India. So we have so many feathers um, on the uh, Ambedkarji's cap. We each one could take one of them and um, pick it up as um, um, a, a, as um, a beacon of light for our life's journey for some time. But we cannot just pick one of these uh, and uh, um, dedicate our lives to just one cause. But I think this is time and times like this, celebrating birth anniversaries of such iconic figures is an occasion for us to pause, introspect in our lives as to what have I received from the society, 
maybe from modern India, maybe not from the society, the positive things from the uh, society and negative things from society, how have these factors shaped me? Or how have these factors shaped my community? Or how have these factors shaped my part of the country and my society, maybe my state too? And let us therefore at this time pause and um, uh, give serious uh, reading and thought uh, to the legendary works uh, that Baba Sahib has left for us to pick up from where he left and what he wrote and to implement and actualize them in our lifetime so that this, in this modern India would continue to change and finally attain uh, the the shape of, of the uh, that Baba Sahib envisioned when he drafted the constitution, a great constitution, a constitution which was to ensure social justice, justice to all, a constitution which provided space for each individual to claim one's own dignity, a dignity um, as a human. And therefore, um, if we understand the, um, the scope of fraternity, it was uh, meant to abolish discrimination, uh, humiliation, um, uh, which is coupled with discrimination, or as I mentioned earlier, discrimination being only a tool for humili humiliation, and therefore fraternity, uh, the entire concept of fraternity was meant to achieve. These are not only theoretical concepts and philosophical ideas, but fraternity is a physical thing. Fraternity requires a collective, collective, a group of people, so that this concept can be actualized, translated from a concept to a principle, a living principle of a collective. Um, discrimination happens when uh, people f see others who may be perceived to be unequal, not having parity. So discrimination could have a disparity as a prerequisite. And therefore, um, when we also entertain this idea of disparity, um, instead of meeting out the harm disparity can do if disparity is meted out through discrimination, humiliation, then that de degenerates the society again. Let me not uh, get into some of these concepts e e further. Um, today, uh, in fact, I'm referring to one of the um, articles, which is uh, three years old. Um, and when that article was written, I think um, uh, the data that was published was, uh, that was a time when 45.3% of STs, the scheduled tribes, were still below the poverty line. And at that time, in that is in 2017, three years ago, the average monthly per capita expenditure of rural ST families was just merely 426 rupees. I would not expect a dramatic change in these figures. So I'm talking about, and I would like to take forward Baba Sahib and his works, his examples of the kind of life he lived, and his writings and his works, which need to become a guiding principle the operative directives for us as individuals, as collectives. And therefore, in post-COVID-19 India, for the Adivasis, what do all these things mean? What did COVID-19 show us? COVID-19 not only brought this uh, pandemic, which was not only a national uh, medical emergency, but also turned out to be a global um, pandemic. 
we have seen that this has been one disease which does not discriminate. So interesting part is nature does not discriminate. But we, the products of nature, because of being equipped with education and knowledge maybe, become discriminatory. Nature does not discriminate. But we humans become dis discriminating people. Um, COVID-19 treated all humans, everybody in India also, equally, no discrimination. Um, in fact, no natural disaster discriminates people. And COVID-19 was no exception. The virus has treated equally. Virus, in fact, it is said that the virus doesn't know how to behave in a human host. And so the virus is going berserk, but then if it affects an individual, it affects the person and does not have any exemption. It does not even uh, treat a rich differently from the poor, an upper class, an upper caste from a lower one, a humble background, and educated from the illiterate, and all have been treated alike by COVID-19. This is my first point about COVID-19. The second thing um, uh, that we see is what did all the countries, including India, do in order to contain the spread of the virus, all the countries declared lockdown. And lockdown in India brought a picture which was very different from all the other countries. When the lockdown, asking people which our Prime Minister did very emphatically that everybody must be indoor inside the homes. We had population from the cities and different states where people had gone to earn their living who were not in their homes. And then they wanted to return to their homeland. And this lockdown in India brought to the surface, into the focus, to the media, the invisible side of India. I'm not getting into how, what percentage of these migrant laborers and those who were not probably laborers but were migrants working in unorganized sector were desperate to get back to their homeland because they were not in their homes. And this invisible India was visible at this time. Post 25th March, India witnessed and the invisible side of India. The chaotic condition the cities were in, the towns were in, the railway stations were in, the bus stands were in. The police had difficulty maintaining law and order and also to inf enforce the uh, do's and don'ts of the lockdown. But this situation, COVID-19, brought to light, brought to the surface, the invisible side of India. This invisible side had never been um, a part of the policy decisions and policy making because they were in the unorganized sector. Some of them were not, some of them have not been counted in our census uh, 2011. And so there, they, this is a number that did not count probably to the nation, India. However, COVID-19 brought out the invisible population of India. The third thing to me, COVID-19 did. The outpour of emotions from the privileged or outpour of emotions of the privileged or those who had for the have-nots. This is to be appreciated that we in India are a people who are not primarily um, primarily 
love, we do not primarily have love for our wealth and we are not a people who would be possessive about what we have earned or what we possess but we are also a caring and a sharing people. However, this outpour of emotions of caring and sharing has happened because we have seen masses of people, children on the shoulder of the fathers and uh, smaller children uh, being carried by the mothers and the entire household of or family of four caring with all that they possessed and being rendered homeless because from their shelter and not having space in the bus in order to return to their homeland. Now these scenes have been brought to people by the media and thanks to the media and therefore we have seen the sharing and caring side of Indian peoples. However, I would have a question when a rightful share of these people is um, um, the question of rightful share of rights of these people is debated how we would pos uh, how we would respond and all those who have had very positive emotions and actions whether our responses is going to be consistent in a later time than how it has been now. And therefore, whether this help, uh, an emotion of sympathy would turn into empathy or not, whether this, these acts of help would change into responses of giving the due share to these people, only then I think we would make some headway in the direction of social justice that was part of the vision of uh, Baba Sahib. Let me come to um, uh, the, my, the th third segment that I want to talk about. So, in post-COVID-19 India, for the Adivasis, do we have anything to borrow, to adapt and imbibe from life, works, vision of Baba Sahib? Ram Chandra Guha in his article has uh, also mentioned, uh, I think in 2018, uh, he states, tragically, the Adivasis of India have had no such leader to inspire and move them in their own struggles for identity and self-respect. Um, because he notes that Dalits have Ambedkar as their um, leader. So this is one concern we see in uh, um, uh, uh, Ramchand Guha's uh, article. However, we also note that there have been, uh, we would, uh, I would at this time also like to acknowledge the vision of Baba Sahib for India and not specific peoples of India, but vision of India where he saw a space for each people in each people's group and therefore without being communal, communal in his approach, without being sectarian in his approach, without being casteist in his approach, he considered more pragmatic criteria to bring in a group called scheduled tribes, which included all the Adivasi or tribal communities and also those communities whose geographical and developmental index was same as those of the Adivasis and tribals. 
and so the india of baba saheb had space and development scope and means for all equally for all now uh, having said that i think um i would like to now focus on the three points that i want to um take as um, take as not lessons but what are possible the uh, the way forward for the adivasis um i think time and again we tribals and scheduled tribes are very grateful to baba saheb for making provisions in the constitution so that we have we to have the constitutional safeguard um, um and not continue to be subject to the historic deprivation atrocities inhuman treatment um uh, but to have dignity to have e- access to resources and also develop this uh, and be part of the concept of fraternity that i elaborated a while ago now for me i think we have had enough and more expressions of gratitude but i think this is time and especially this year while we each one of us is sitting in one's own home on or a safe shelter it is time to introspect and question is it not time to rise to an an attitude rather than the gratitude alone and therefore to move from gratitude to attitude an attitude which may be a minuscule part of what baba saheb had but to cultivate for oneself as an individual to cultivate as a collective groups like babsa maybe study circles sambedkar study circles charkhand tribal students association as it is in uh, jnu maybe all india dalit and adivasi students association or peoples and numerous such organizations i think it is time we moved from the level of gratitude to attitude and i think for the attitude nothing uh, uh, nothing better than baba saheb's slogan of educate agitate and organized can be the starting point education equips us with the modern education which has scientific temper as an essential basis and therefore to if for adivasi communities the tribals it is time that we learn to rationalize and present our traditional logic, knowledge systems also if we are unable to give space for the modern edu- education then let us bring our traditional knowledge systems and traditional knowledge and present it with scientific temper so that it would enrich the modern education but the, the starting point is be part of the modern education if we do not have the ability the resources to continue to be educated and go from degree one degree to the other which are the formal university degrees of higher education still i think attaining or um, going for higher education should be one of the least goals so that human dignity that can be claimed would have at least one one excuse and one basis um and so education and modern education is very very important because modern education would indeed give us 
the methodology to go forward and therefore educate and definitely educate we cannot adivasis and tribal communities we cannot afford to still have school drop outs and i think when we go to look at the data the drop out boys number of boys is higher than the drop out girls and so we need to seriously think and identify for ourselves what are the local reasons which are forcing students young energetic children to drop out from school drop out from college drop out from universities if it is discrimination again we cannot allow discrimination to prevail and we would have to fight it out and so agitate agitate we cannot get agitated for the luxuries we do not have but we need to be educated ed- agitated for the deprivation we are uh, we have been faced with we cannot be continued to be marginalized and if mainstream culture or mainstream india tells us that they want adivasis to be mainstreamed let us be cautious our identity is going to contribute to the diversity of this nation and if we want to we decide to be stream uh, mainstreamed that would be at the cost of our identity and therefore let us be agitated for the right reasons and not be agitated for flimsy material things be agitated for what i am not allowed to access because if i access i would be part of the nation building no we need to be agitated for whenever we are prevented from accessing and organize finally and organize baba saheb has done what he could for the nation leaving his vision of modern india and it is time for us to experiment and this is going to be very unique for us tribal communities tribal societies and adivasi societies i think no other society has ever had history of what is known as collective leadership sometimes rotatory leadership also because when it is the collective which is the le- uh, which leads a society then probably the the chief or headship can be rotatory too and therefore while we organize lacking an iconic figure like baba saheb i think we cannot be looking for our own individual tribe icons baba saheb has laid down a vision which is so comprehensive and now we cannot have a replacement or a substitute no now this vision of india i think it is for us to choose whether we we do agree and we want to be part of that vision or not and if we do because most of us have been benefited by that vision and the functional part of that vision the implemented implementation of that vision the rights that have been enshrined in the constitution i think we do not have a we do not have an option of pulling out but now that we have been part of that vision and benefiting from that vision i think it is time for us to also experiment with what has been our traditional model of leadership which is collective leadership because to me not being a political scientist but to me this seems to be one model of dem- democracy which has worked for generations for de- for ages in our societies and therefore it is time to organize ourselves uh with the same traditional models in order to take our fights forward in order to fight for the self uh, respect in order to claim the dignity in order to also um show uh, models of fraternity and therefore 
from moving from gratitude to attitude i think the slogan educate agitate organize is not uh, is the most liveliest and most um, uh, inspiring uh, 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 slogan for me my second uh, point that i would uh, like to pose and place uh, uh, before especially as the um, tribals uh, tribes tribal societies and adivasis is to come out of our visions for our peoples and our people groups or our regional visions i think we need to learn from the works and examples of baba saheb that there we need to have our vision of india which is of course within the scope of the vision of india baba saheb uh, presented so having a vision of uh, of india the modern india where what would be the space for the adivasi or our societies so it is not to have a fresh vision of um, india but in that vision of india the vision of baba, baba saheb's vision of modern india let us identify or define and carve out the definite space for our peoples our societies and strive to actualize those we may have for this we could take inspirations from all the uh, leaders of the world not we don't have to confine to leaders of india we do have this larger than life um, icon baba saheb but beyond him i think we could have our own tribes icon we could have international icons as to how we could actualize in defining the space of our societies in the uh, vision of modern india and move from just the vision for our people to the vi- the vision of the space of our people in the vision of baba saheb's uh, modern india uh, uh my third and the last point that i would like to place be, would be to be people of resolve um i think um um uh i think uh, it is um uh eknath ma eknath avad ji uh who has mentioned that um adivasis and tribals are the peoples with um hardship lots of hardship and dalits are the dalits okay yeah ek eknath avad ji has men- has written that the adivasis can bear much hardship and the dalits can bear much struggle adivasis can bear much hardship and dalits can bear much struggle while i'm not at this time proposing that tribals and adivasis only uh, become people of much struggle but what i would like to propose is that it is time we became people of resolve people of resolve to achieve one's rightful space in the nation and the nation building so that no more we are known as people who are who can be uh, who can um, bear much hardship which for some people especially the ad- administrators and those who have to allow us to have a rightful share and privileges as um as enshrined in the constitution would like to would like to negatively put as we are the people who can tolerate a lot of hardship no 
I think the hardships and toler uh, the level of tolerance of hardships cannot be misunderstood um, uh, to be misunderstood uh, to be um, misunderstood by satisfaction no it cannot be satisfied it is not satisfaction or to be satisfied with what we have what irrespective of our hardships we are um, we are quiet and we are not we are neither being part of the major struggles or we are not raising our own struggles no i'm I, i would not at this time again come to the level of struggle but i would like us to be people of resolve to achieve to achieve one's rightful space the rightful space in nation building and therefore no more should be as we move from 2020 and we do not know how long these lockdowns are going to continue i think this is time this is time of hibernation for a good time of introspection and also to interact with each other over the communication channel to have discussions and conferences and conference calls to have very very active and fruitful discussions so therefore as babsa has led the way of celebrating our celebration this year is uh, going to be on the by the electronic media we online um, and i congratulate once again babsa for this that let us utilize what is available what is that we can utilize in order to exchange ideas in order to shape each other in order to learn from each other in or in order to even strengthen one's own um, uh, one's own ideas we this has given us time and opportunity to sharpen our own thoughts sharpen our own um, concepts and so do much reading and writing in order to um, uh, to be ready with a blueprint when uh, when uh, so that we know exactly what we would do after the lockdowns are lifted after we have a very different sort of uh, india post covid 19 and so therefore, therefore let us utilize this time let us utilize this time moving from the atti- from gratitude to attitude to carving out and specifying the space of our people in the vision of modern india A- and also to resolve to achieve those um um uh, i would once again thank babsa for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my thoughts um i hope uh, they uh, they as usual they may not be very very uh, organized and logically flowing from one to the other uh, but i want to thank babsa for putting me in the spot as i mentioned earlier we, we, by so doing they help me f- uh, discover myself and my potential or my weaknesses so that i'm able to uh, overcome my own fears of um, um of uh, fears of not being proficient ever enough to deliberate on topics such as this but my message this evening is uh, this morning is more to myself and my homeland i'm in my homeland and people in my neighborhood and this region who associate with this um, uh, homeland and also those who would agree with me to um to take a life forward in the post covid 19 india so that we know exactly what to do and we are not left there looking for leaders especially the political leaders but we would look for the leader inside ourselves in order to do whatever is uh, required and respond in a very structured manner and therefore our let our communication be such that 
we would be able to, with each other, our communication with each other be such that we would, when we come back and join with each other together, meet in person, we would know exactly what um, we have to do rather than catching up uh, only with what we did during these periods of lockdown. So once again, my heart full thanks to and gratitude to Babsa. Once again, my humblest uh, respect to Baba Sahib. I remember, I'm reminded of the times I have been to Parliament Street, to the celebrations there. It is just like a mela, such a festivity to celebrate um, Baba Sahib's life and the works and his footprints, which people have lived even after his death. And so I think there is space for Baba Sahib's footprint, even in the ST uh, societies and tribal societies and Adivasi societies. And therefore, I, uh, in post-COVID-19 India, I would like to show uh, the footprint of Baba Sahib's work in, um, uh, in my life and my, uh, the collective uh, that I belong to. Um, my respect to Baba Sahib once again, my respect to all those who made the um, uh, environment uh, 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 in such a way that Baba Sahib could bring out the best in uh, him so that these works become the guiding principles and uh, the uh, instructive directives for us. Thank you, Babsa. Thank you. And all the very best. Press on. Press on. Educate. Agitate. Organize. Educate. Agitate. Organize.